man horror host here and mental health some things come and go some ebb and flow some could never have been in vogue some never got the chance to be and there are those things that never fall out of favour just being able to ogle and be served drinks and food by gorgeous women in ridiculously skimpy themed costumes which in any is which is why an establishment like fancy fancy dress dress kept on coming keeping on despite any backlash public outcry shady histories or any manner of things which might have been less residential business closed doors for good a 24 our bar restaurant featuring scantily clad costume female star forged on after all there really was no bad publicity for fantasy dress all publicity would whether considered good bad ugly otherwise by monks was welcomed nothing could stop man and woman alike turning up in the droves night after night after night especially on holidays but though it was a big commercial holiday that it really drew the punters fantasy dress didn't discriminate on what holidays they appropriated with a holiday of some description no matter how much girl on just about every day of the Canada year happening somewhere in the world fantasy dress had a big pool of inspiration to pull upon pull from and they mined it extensively St. Patrick's Day, 4th of July Australia Day Halloween, but with Valentine's Day, the 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 day it couldn't have it. It could have been anything, any excuse for a good excuse to dress a stunning staff up in outfits that barely consisted of more than a series of shoelace designed to match the designated day's occasion. Fancy to dress, boss man, Paresh, and it's. It, extensive knowledge in each and every holiday around the globe for the most part the patrons drifting in on the obscure holidays from other countries had no idea what the occasion was all about but that was hardly the point they didn't know they didn't care and half the time they didn't ask there was no reason only they were there for no reason only it was sure as hell wasn't a history lesson or intentional holidays mary hadn't been on the staff along at all she was essentially the new girl all the same she's seen all sorts of holidays be rolled in rolled out by the shrewd finesse her various outfits donned by her fellow waitresses getting wilder more exaggerate and more revealing each time in the brief tension now before having to put up with an endless parade of drunks perverts lecturers and assorted weirdos on niche occasions few of those these but Jackass's new fuck all about. Mary was about to be privy to her biggest occasion yet, Christmas Eve. Though it was only early evening, fancy dress was already a packed, heaving mass of humanity, a throbbing soundtrack of music, married to laughter, a gale of loud conversation meshed in the unholy marriage. But it's all background noise to Mary. Mary. She was accustomed to tuning all the constant swirling sound caps out, focusing on the orders from the Panthers, all the most, all the most senior staff, including Passion, the self appointed head bitch Maria, was in preventative thing. The rest was gibberish. She treated it as such. Hearing an entrance of some of the most creative Renabelled comments folks would conjure up was old hat. It bothered some of the girls, but Marie didn't give half a fuck about that. The f- drunk and horny dirty fuckers here with the loudest mouths had a snowball chance in hell of getting to do anything remotely resembling the lurid fancies they spouted so she ignored it and got on with the bit got on with business loaded up with another tray of drinks she navigated through the milling crowd she was dressed or more probably undressed to press tonight she pulled in plenty of big tips on average nights where zero percent of the crowd knew what holiday had been was being peddled, but she knew the commercial big hitters were where the big money really flowed. So despite knowing it was certainly going to increase the snow blues, snow seasonal fuckery, she donned simply 
fitting attire to match the occasion and maximize any chances of walking out of shift's end with not just a jingling bell, bells but jingling pockets. She was an elf clad in tiny green mini dress with a hugger neck, plush trim and a jacket hammerline from which minuscule gold bells hung. The whole thing only really covered half of her shapely arse. She wore high, high heel red boots with stiletto steel steels so she could be classified as lethal weapons. Red and white green striped gloves at her elbows and a cute green elf hat. Green, particularly this Christmassy green, was not normally a colour, but she had to admit the shade was the perfect foal for her long dust of black hair. No doubt she was looking fucking stunning. She had debated on wearing prosthetic oil fears as well, at least some cheap plastic knockoff, but I figured that might impede on her ability to hear things properly, and knowing how good and noisy and intoxicated Christmas Eve was going to be, no matter how adept she was tuning out the white noise, not hearing shit right wouldn't be advisable. Mary didn't hang around after be, after living the drinks. She had a point of never engaging in banter with her with punters, risking back and forth, and she had his comments as Kathy's forte, and she made it work. Not so merry. She was all about getting in, getting the job done, getting out. She couldn't care less if the, some titillation talk the drunken fools would rack up heavy bait days. Her looks were getting her plenty as it is, and she didn't need to go any lower than that. A ridiculous train of comments followed her as she departed, never getting back through the rush. Damn, hope you come down my chimney tonight. I'll be coming down something too. She is an elf, you fuckard, not Santa. Can you jingle my bells? You sure need ringing. Better yet, can I jingle those bells on your arse with my dick? I've never banged an elf before. Can I have you in my Christmas stocking? I was stocking, I mean. All that more trailed after her, along with a few slight attempts to grab her at her arse, brushed up against her in an other ways, uh, get her hands on her. Mostly folks are here to the rules, and security crew were very, very vigilant. But now and then, some also had to try his luck. She saw the other girls working the tables, working the crowd, every play, every each playing to their strengths. Though there was no need, there was no, though there was no need to, to on nights like this, packed out some abundant opportunities for tips and. Everybody, some of the girls, still treated it like a competition, trying to outplay and outdo one another, which was completely unnecessary. They would be run off their feet, as it was, even with a few full start on deck. Mary couldn't care less about competing either. She knew she had no com- there was no competition, but in looks, not in the look stakes, she had them all best no matter how gorgeous they were. And besides, the weirdos who trailed through the joint all had different tastes and panache a girl was to cater for each of them. Jessica was an elf too. A girl was perhaps the weakest immune system under the sun. Seemed, and she said she seemed to take more days off than Marie imagined was feasible. Was in a red and green ensemble with a plunging neckline that displayed an abundant trailing to maximum covers, capability, and candy cane striped knee socks plucked some and blonde. It didn't seem to matter. This girl was away in more days than she was in. When she turned up, folks were flaunting over her no, like nobody's business, male and female alike. Essa had, hadn't bothered putting much effort in, in her, you know, on her costume, figuring a sexy centre outfit would do, as long as it showed off her tits and ass. It, it did. She was good to go. Esther was hot, no doubt. She was vapid and and the blank eyed, looking like she smacked out of the ground most of the time. She never rang in if she didn't, couldn't, wasn't coming to work, or just didn't show up. There was a bunch of others dressed in very Christmas themed thing, theme things, including some of which bordered on offensive to the ultra religious with their productive sexy takes on the nativity subjects, but Mary had to concentrate. Conceded it was a motor slut cafe who took the bits cake. She hadn't gone to much trouble either, 
but her attire was clever all the same. Donning a simple quilt set hat, had red miniskirt and red fuckery boots. It complete with the assemble of a simple snucket in fitting t shirt, a belt of mistletoe around her waist, a slogan on her shirt read, Kiss me under the mistletoe, and actually the boldest toker on, on the staff made it that a focal point for, for any Julie Arsenal's she was she waited upon. Mary wasn't going out of her way to befriend any, her, any of her co workers. She wasn't there to make friends. Already Miss Maria, Maria hated her from the word go, but according to most of the girls, Maria hated anyone who, who came in ever since her favourite staffer, a star attraction Easter bunny, just right, vanished right off the face of earth, as Esther no less. Under a pile of suspicious sequences with the well, warmer winter, well, welter but dead bodies turning up mutilated, missing testicles, a snuggled board of brutal entity, simple glory, glory shit. As she scanned the crowd, Mary had to concede she was feeling like her co workers had over exaggerated the behavior of the bunters on their massive occasions. By all counts, these complete commercial qualities turned normal fuckers into complete freak fuckers. Just like a full moon was meant to make folks go batshit crazy, there's still a long way to go in the night. But for the time she had been, she had been present, Mary was feeling a little overwhelmed. She had been expecting horny desperados, desperate to run off at the mouth with sleazy shit. They probably practiced with one another before coming in, so it wasn't nothing special. Then Santa Claus walked into the front, in the front door. At first, Mary just laughed herself, thinking nothing of it. After all, it wasn't unusual for some patrons to try and get in the costume of things, but certainly holidays donned their own costumes. Mary had seen some women come in on off the street, dressed to kill, looking to outdo fantasy dress own staff with capability and skimpness of their costumes. She heard passion to even approach one or two to see if they wanted to join the boys before. She noticed it wasn't Santa in the house. They were characters with the fuck they, 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 they were, they, they were characters with what the fuck aren't oh they? Reindeer masks had to be antlers, long faces, Jeremy tan brown. They didn't look normal though. Kind of meshed on, misshapen, all together fucking creepy. Nothing festive about ill-fitting mask coverings, masquerading as quest uh, regalia. Looked like last minute grabs at the bargain basement costume I had to chop. To begin, to begin with, she thought it was just two flanking Christmas, two flanking Christmas present, but her eyes panned around the room, as they prone to do, always pay to keep your eyes everywhere all the time, she realized, when there were more reindeers in the house, only over by the bar, by the doors leading to the restaurant, facilities. Another by the side entrance, another adjacent to the staff exit uh, back. She surveyed that it was visible, the whole area, eyes darting around the establishment perimeters. There were reindeers all around, standing on the fringes of the crowd, essentially surrounding them, as if the deformed anonymous masks over their faces weren't creeping enough. The lurking on the outside of the rest of the patrons made Marie... It seemed to be perturbed. It was a congregation was meant to be Santa, his eight reindeers, or whatever maybe the fuck he had. Mary didn't quite recall then what why wouldn't they enter fancy dress fancy dress together? Why didn't they just be a whole fucking sleigh in? Mary wasn't common Mars weren't common about fancy dress. Fancy dress, not unless they were engaging in some mild specific holiday or a rare instant, Pranesh decided that a masquerade ball style event would work. Since this was right, neither and their costumes were generally did not indulge in costumes of their own, it didn't usually resort to masks. Mary thought that strange appearance of Santa's would be sleigh holders, most unnerving. He was generally on the ball with seeing if such new patrons were coming in, but of course it's pretty hectic here. He couldn't be blamed for missing any of the new two newcomers. A pile of masked reindeer seemed like something she had picked up, something in through the front door straight away. Unless they had 
can come in the same entrance. It seemed like they were, that she had picked them up some coming up through the front door, straight away, so, there, unless they had come in in the same entrance. Surely security would have been all over that. They were vigilant, stringent, and it wouldn't, wasn't much amiss. They got up, got by them. Maria frowned, as then Santa's voice boomed, even over the constant thumb of the crowd noise. Married to the pulse of the music, it was audible, and Maria was standing at a fair distance from him. Ho, 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 was what he said. Of course, Mary didn't know what to expect to say. Anything else? What else would you say? He's fucking Santa Claus, after all. A couple of the folk around his general vicinity laughed. Some cleared his path. Others drifted in closer, as they expected the guy in the red suit to start with separating presents or some shit. Some annoyed him completely. Then the music stopped, abruptly. One moment in industrial version of the deck the horse was humming away in accompaniment to the crowd noise. Next, the veneer of the sound is added to mix was stripped away. Departure stops some people in their tracks, causing them to momentarily cease conversations, carousing or catcalling to the scantily cut of staff. Not all, but a good majority. Enough was the sound that was a place to dissipate to the point it was eerily quiet in there. Mary glanced at the next level where Burko's DJ booth was located. Their level was one open one, ridden by rooms where some of the girls resided, and some occasionally supplemented the income, but it vexed the culture of activities, other than those that were nothing. There was nothing else up there. Oh, the DJ, well, where we go work the tracks and play music to cater for each other's theme. Except now, it just wasn't, it was wasn't it wasn't just Rico at the booth. It's one of those thickly faced reindeer people here too. Ho ho Santa repeated in a void of crustacean music and Grinnell Hatto created his voice carried right throughout Francis' dress, part aside from those who hadn't stopped talking or even to inability to care. There hadn't been a soul in the place who didn't hear his words. Ho 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 there's a sudden wide whole track of holes in there. Ho ho ho, repeated the centre in the void of saturation music and general chatter. Crazy voice carried right through throughout. Fancy dress aside from those who hadn't stopped talking or had been too ready to care, they wouldn't have been a soul in the place. Who didn't hear these words? Ho ho ho! There's a whole fuckload of hoes in the air. There's one there, one there, another one over there. A whole pile of them shaking their hands, bare backsides, rubbing their peculiar ambitiousness in everybody's face. Yes, sir. This place is a swimming viper's nest of hoes and sinners. There's nothing jolly about a particular diatribe at all. Amusing on the face as some patrons shifted to confusion, vexation, irritation, push out of the floor, and doing his usual rounds, ensuring the girls were keeping everyone happy, and all just flying was already on a job, speaking to his new, into his new lapel mic. Security personnel, now, now and Murphy, were closest, and already responded to Page's directive. As he moved and purposeful try to set clinical centre, a couple of radius put to patch itself from their lurking wall positions and put themselves in the path for both guards. Even the men were prepared to fuck around and any would-be distractions or half-assed attempts to prevent them gaining access to the centre. Both over six foot tall, in muscular physiques, they looked like they were carved from granite. Other f- fellows had dwelt with many a soul, far more intimidating than a pair of clowns and reindeer suits before. It, even the patience and inclination to waste time swatting at pesky flies they stood it amounted to. Except there was nothing half arsed about the reindeer pair at all. Before either God could have mobilised and lift, identified the reindeer approach, 
Some of the fates showed their hands at the very last moment, both inside the long ten from the but from inside the long tan sleeves of the outfits of reindeer sat back a s got lit blades died as they So there's nothing half hearted about the reindeer behind at all. Even though even even for quote even a guard could mobilize and notify the, the reindeer approach. Both the feet showed their hands at the very last moment, for inside the long tin sleeves of their outfits, the reindeer let blades a slide, knives falling into their riding hands. One punched the point of his weapon to Noah's stomach and sliced upwards, shivering through material skin, flesh, internal organs, as a man's eyes boggled, boggled wide. The pain and shock of the reindeer assassin continued to work. The blade, widening a horrific and bloody aperture in Nell's gut, loops of innards spilled out to slippery, fleshy coals. At the same time, reindeer too stabbed Matthew in the side of the neck, jerking his knife around as it tended to saw the man's head off. If it, if that was the plan, it hadn't worked so well, but it made sure as hell put the brakes on Matthew's forward progress. Screams and shouts plummeted one another and chased each other around the room. Panic erupted and Mildred's reactions were merry. Froze the route back to the bar. Could have already see why some of these actions were doomed to fail. Many patrons making the slight possession to run and the doors were going to be pulled up short. So the strangers were collates for every entry exit. And those who entered in their company would already shut and close the Close their doors. Many patrons pulling, making the snap decision to run for the doors were going to be pulled up short. Rangers danger is were every were at every entry exit. Those who entered his company had already shut and sealed the main doors. Thus, Santa was pulling a handgun over his pocket in his red suit and triggering a burst into the air. A sharp crack of it stopping amidst the screaming, stupid medley of chaos stopped people short, freezing like some idiot game of statues. Everybody's fucking stay right where you are, Santa could then commanded, please. Perhaps unnecessary, the gunfire was enough to send folks ducking down for cover. Spawning on the floors, may hiding behind one another. Whether or not the reindeer disciples around the perimeters were similarly armed seemed relevant. A few of the staff of patrons were about to test the theory that they might not be, since the two of them. Blade whining, whining, horrific and bloody aperture. Nails, guts, loops, and then spoiled upwards. At the same time, reindeer too stabbed Matthew in the side of the neck, jerking his knife around. As if he intended to sell the man's right head off. If it was a plan, it didn't work out so well. But as well, sure as hell, put a brakes on Matthew's forward progress, screams and shouts plummeted to one another and chased each other around the room. Panic erupted in the merry directions, but Mary froze and route back to a bar. Could already see that why these reactions were doomed to fail. Many matrons making the set addition to run. The doors were going to be pulled out short. Santa's way into his acolytes were at every e- entry exit. Those who entered in his company already shut and sealed the main doors. Then Santa was putting a handgun from a pocket in his red suit and triggering a burst in the air, a sharp crack of it snapping amidst the screaming, stupid medley of chaos, stopped people short, freezing him with some into game of statues. Everyone fucking stay where you are, Santa commanded. Perhaps unnecessary. A gunfire is enough to prevent people ducking for cover. 
pulling on floors, hiding behind one another. Whether or not the ranger disciplines, the disciples ran the perimeter to simply armed, simply armed, seemed irrelevant. A few of the staff and patrons were about to test the theory that it might not be. Since two of them clearly just possessed knives, they were just used they just used to dispel and stab personal stab security personnel with them. it was a safe bet assuming others were totoring something equally deadly greater weight in numbers meant one of those for these fantasy Trespassers and workers would probably have made it out of the way or another, but shit chucked them were in possession of stones to throw them right into the line of fire. Nobody would go but first to die. Well, first after security meetings in any case. Look, in this teeming, teeming perverted mass of filth in here, Santa said, this is how you denigrate heathen scum celebrate Christmas by sinning and flashing flesh into temp- to a fornication, fucking Whoring, drunken, convulsing, and debasing yourselves. Fortunately, Santa Claus had arrived just in time with a whole sack of presents, full of presents, to rectify that situation and lighten the heart of sinners. With a crowd from over the milling, over there milling around Santa, when he first arrived into the place, Mary hadn't noticed that, but she did. Know, she did now. He had a red suit, a white, big white beard, a ridiculous hat. He even tooted a big fat sack over his shoulder. Though the gun in his hand tended to ruin his terribility, general, general impression that most people might have had of typical Santa Claus. Disciples, Santa addressed his reindeers, which made Mary think he was something of a confused motherfucker. Did not seem to like sure you wanted to be sent disciples he dressed his reindeers and made it Mary think he was something of a confused motherfucker didn't seem like he's sure whether he wanted to be Saint Nick or Saint or Jesus Christ so we're going to make the sinners from the sluts and slut pillars Maybe these poor misguided idiots can find ways to atone. Despite the gravity of the situation, Mary found it particularly amusing that some of the fancy dress girls suit should mightily be afforded by a slight remark. Shit, it, was, it wasn't entirely an apt appraisal of each and every one of them. Some of the blank statements, but in sure as hell, fit a few of those women, just like a body, boy, but it body glove. A rough cycle, circle of space then opened up around the demented Chris Kringle and his two flanking reindeer disciples as well as two murderous freaks with a bloody knives. Into it so two more thrust up. Another couple of century brigade, Michael and Jonad. They drew a big men, their faces swollen and bloody but forced to their knees on the floor before the captors moved off with other members of the reindeer posse. I do as they red claim but study not so jolly lead a bid. Mary still froze in the same spot that she's standing ever since clapping. Eyes and the festive freaks were suddenly punted to forward. Caught her balance by surprise, she fell forward, only just managed to save herself from a violent face to face meeting with the ground. As she sprawled she realized one the reindeer must have held herself with a boot or arse. Mary stood frozen to the same pot, but steadily ever since, clapping eyes. A rough circle of space that opened up around the disvented Chris Kringle, and two flanking reindeer disciples as well, as the two murderous freaks and their bloodied knives into, into two more, fast another couple of the security parade. Michael and Jordan, the two of big men, their faces swollen and bloody were forced to their knees on the floor, while the captors moved off with the other members of Red Pudussy to do their red-clad, not-so-jolly leader bid. 
Mary still frozen in the same spot and had been standing there ever, ever since clapping eyes and the freak, festive freaks were suddenly punted forward. Caught off balance by surprise, she fell forwards, only just managing to save herself from a violent face-to-face meeting on the ground. As she spawned, she realised that one of the reindeer must have propelled her with an ar- boot on her arse. The p- number of patrons of fancy dress staff in the venue far outweighed the men- number of Christian Christmas dresses. Yet, so- yet someone had its des- desired disciples managed to comply with Christmas bit, Santa's bidding swiftly. Punters were moved with two troubles. Mid-ma- moved for tables, mid- mid-meal, almost without any issue, some with violent force. Those popping up at the bar, otherwise milling around the place, while lightweights commanded to move and join in patrons, the scattered costume girls, patrons, and the the security guard, all and all the other staff, but were made to remain together. Some still standing, still standing. Some forced to their knees. Others, like Marie, were sorted from behind, remained on the floor. From an awkward position, Mary guessed fear of being shot. Stabbed and likewise mutilated at the hands of these tobacco drops was a strong motive for most to comply. Whether people in it here generally believed in some Christmas, traditions, or any of the other bullshit associated with it, it's a fair bet to each one of them wanted to live long enough to see Christmas Day. The reindeer most must have looked like demented rejects from a costume party gone badly wrong, but they were brutally effective at separating the punters from the staffers. Mary had not seen any more guns in possession of the collective, but unlike most of the time, she hadn't been able to see their eyes any, anywhere, c- scoping at anything going on that was happening quickly and ruthlessly. Sure enough, all customers were clear away from the major facility and made of vain in immunity petitions at the very wing of the club, under the watchful eyes of several va- reindeer. A race returned to the central hub, where pushing staff surrounded. Santa strode to where Push stood. It, it was indeed a personal stride, but not some rolling and wit- ambling fat man. As Mary watched, she saw the man that was big, but only not only fat, olive in effect, hardly pro- proper resp- response, representation of Santa at all, even at, along with the gun in his hand, fucked up. They had ideas. The Santa had been, might have looked good, like demented to form rejects from a coaching party gone badly wrong, but they were brutally affected by separating the punters from the staffers. Mary didn't see him any more guns in the possession of the collective, but like most of the time, she was able to meet the eyes of anywhere, scoping out everything going on. It had happened quickly and ruthlessly. Soon enough, all the customers were cleared away from the media facility and made to remain in immunity positions at the very rear of the club, ever under the watchful eyes of several reindeer. The rest returned to the central hub of passion as the staff were surrounded. Santa strode to, it, to where a fresher stood, and it was indeed a personal stride, but so, not some rolling, ambling fat man in the gate. As many what she saw the man was big, but not overly bad. Hardly a proper representation of Santa at all. Again, his gun in his hand fucked up. <clears throat> Reindeer that might have looked like the dejected rejects of a question party gone but Bad wrong, but they were brutally effective at separating punters from the staffers. Mary hadn't seen any more guns than possessions of the collective, but like most of the time, she hadn't been able to make eyes anywhere, scoping out anything going on, and having quickly, ruthlessly. 
Soon enough, all customers were cleared away from the immediate fraternity, and Rayado returned in humiliating positions at the very rear of the club under the watchful eyes of several reindeer. The rest returned to Camp Central Hub where personally staff were surrounded. Santa strode to where the post stood, and was indeed a personal guy, not tried not the uh, some rolling ambling fat man got gates as uh, Mary what she saw that the man was big but not overly bit of that. Hardly <laughs> the proper reputation centre at all. Again the gun in his hand fucked up any notions of a proper centre. You Santa jabbed the nose at the gun like a primitive accusing finger for under precious twirling. You're the root of this evil. You're the smart peddler. It is you. It is how you view Christmas. A time it is time to claim any wealth from the mis from the mis from the misbegotten filthy wretches, less than un in less than their underwear, dressing up to make a mockery of the Christmas tradition in its obscurity. What Christmas means to you? Do I know you? Percy's eyes narrowed as he gazed. Evenly at centre, as if if he was afraid he wasn't yet showing it. You don't know shit. It's a safe bet you don't believe in me. You have no faith, having nothing to do the true Christmas spirit in your mortal soul. So let's just see how much you and your Harlem of whores and much of them, but Christmas means to you, I don't know what you mean, I don't know what you mean. I don't know you, Precious eyes narrowed him as he gazed evenly at Santa. He was afraid he wasn't yet showing it. You don't know shit, it's a safe bet you won't believe in me. You have no faith, some nothing to do the truth, the Christmas spirit in your mortality soul. But let's see how much you in your heart and whores and hatred actually know about Christmas. Let's play games, ask some questions, and see what... Any you could do for your fellow man or woman. Without warning, Santa's gun hand jerked around his short, sharp arc. Pistol weapon patched his face across the face. A fine spray of blood mislit, misdrewed, misted in the air, fa- fancy dress. Boss cup sized like a man in a rat, abruptly released from its rings. Santa was already turning his, on his boot to heel, getting round to his eyes. Mm. Well, let's see how much you and your heart and whores and henchmen actually know about Christmas. Let's play some games, ask some questions, and see what you, what any of you go f- do for your fellow man or woman. That warning, Santa's gun hand jerked around in short, sharp arc, pistol whipping punch across the face, a fine spray of bloody mist it, mist it. In the air, a fancy, fancy dress boss capsized, like a marionette apparently released from its strings. Santa was already turning his bo- booted heel, turning around to an eye and other member. Other members of his captive audience before Patches had it even hit the deck. You, you tend to f- focus on this, sir. If you're the first and Santa, and, uh, but you didn't know the first thing about the legend of Santa Claus, or St. Nick of any yet. I'm sure, I hell bet you don't. How the fog is about an activity, for example. Can you tell me what gifts the three wise men bought the, for the Jesus, baby Jesus Mary's? Wasn't even sure if Esther was thinking about his answer. Her face was still bore the same blank, vivid expression. Go for Santa was already turning his booted heel, turning around to the guy. Other members of his collective order to report so to even hit the deck. You, his attention focused on Esther, in your flux and Santa's slut attire. Bet you don't even the first thing about Legend of Santa Claus or said Nick. Any more, any of that, I'm sure. As hell, but you don't know the focus about the nativity. For example, can you tell me what gifts the three wise men bought for the baby Jesus? Mary wasn't sure if Esther was thinking about his, uh, his answer. 
Her voice still bore the same blank, vivid expression. As always, she, as, it, as if the words hadn't been registered, then the frown crinkled her visage. Gold, Frankenstein, and mirror. Mary had, would have laughed out loud if she did not suspect the reaction would occur the wolf of Santa. He, however, did laugh, incredulously shaking his head. So hard a fluffy white pom-pom on the end of his luscious stocking cap flapped from one side to another. Jiminy H. Christmas could have asked you to recite the jing- jingles to Derek to Jingle Bells. Jingles, hell of a good idea. One of the reindeer standing back behind us, a, a rough arc surrounding the fancy joint to He stepped forward and raised a hand and graced in gloves, intent to resent those helps. Then he was holding a large bell, dull green in colour. He swung it without warning and all incredible. A bell clapper struck the lips of it, moved, ringing out of conjecture with a more, much more disturbing sound, a sound of a heavy object smashing against the side of Esther's head with a flat thud. Esther toppled sideways with an accompanying spatter of blood spluttering from her cranium, spooling against her fellow surf, surf, staffers. As renewed screams of the residue near, nearest to her, she scrambled sideways, backwards, any, anywhere to move clear. Mary, Mary moved, more, moved almost immediately, still scrambling backwards. She thumped into something behind her and stopped short. Logically, she ran herself in the legs of one of the surrounding reindeers. He, he kicked at her in the spine and with such a sharp blow to bell. She felt terribly paralyzed and flopped back down to the floor. If the first blow of the weight weapon hadn't killed Esther, the second one sure hell did. The bell winder could stood aside her prone body and landed another stubby stretch into landed another stubby strike with the blood spattered bell that had flattened her ruined head into a glory f- skull pancake. Shut up, shut up, Santa ballad before the crescendo of squeal, screams and terrified shrieks. There's going to be a whole lot of brains of blood if you lot don't idiots don't pipe down. It isn't so much I don't want you to be heard. After all, bringing a boss had his plan play super so isn't going to amount to squat. It's more than I don't want to hear your painful voices. Most of the screams died away by literally a muffled sobs and more such shock persisted. Some of the girls had actually collapsed on the floor, huddled up with disbelief girls, believing girls. Marie was one of them in something of a fertile ball but only because she felt like moving right now, as in possibility. Her whole back felt like she had been smacked by a jackhammer. Well, I could see they might have been kicked and that off unfairly, Santa said, his tone controversially, controversially laced with amusement. Probably wouldn't, uh, shouldn't have asked the one who looked as dumb as post anything. Of course, Mr. Mr. Stick over there didn't hire her for a though. Did he? Let's hope the rest of the whores didn't. Well, just plastic tits and pretty vacuous faces. Perhaps she hadn't responded, nor, nor he probably expected to. He called away from the centre arc. While attention had been fixed on the spectacle, Vessa's been bludgeoned with a bell. Now he lay on the outskirts of the forged con- congregation. Let be, let's try another, Santa. That's the right number. Maybe the knuckles have a little more respect for the Christmas notion, Santa Art looked at Noah. You, what's your favourite Christmas carol? Jenna, one eye particularly swollen and shut, and with her face cross hatched by cuts and abrasions glared and festive. And that it, fuck you. I guess I expect too much. And that, and not, and that, that one was just about as easy as you got. As if they're going to come, but your Nefendal, Nefendal Tesserome just wouldn't allow you to take a shot at an atoning for your sins, a burden of sinners, a den of sympathies with a sigh. Santa slung the sock of his shoulder, dropping it on the floor between his boots. He handed his gun to the nearest reindeer. 
Only one merry notice was adorned with a shiny red no red Rudolph nose and his deformed costume. So Nick delved inside the sack and rummaged about around him and withdrew an item. Carved a turkey comet and old an angled alkalite. Dress flung down a hand at Santa tossed him what was pro, pro, inappropriately probably a sack with perpendicularly a classic carving knife. An alarm sparked off in Joseph's face. A wild run away, still visible. Almost fearful, panic chorus rang out. This was ha- both Jonas searching for the title of Christmas Carol. And a host of others have frankly heard in Christmas Carol's suggestions. Of, uh, Carved the turkey comment. The answer to the curtain addressed flung out of the hand at a Santa tossed him like he appropriately for his sack a pre a classic carving knife. As alarm sparkled in Jack Jonah's eye, a rather than one eye still visible. Another fearful panicked chorus rang out. This was both saying Jonah searching the title Christmas Carol, a host of others were frankly hurling Christmas Carol to this NASA comment. Karen said said then started up something, saying, Oh, come you, you faithful, in a hideous off key wobble. Comet slugged Jonah with an, el- with an elbow to the temple. A man tippled to his knees and healed over. Day's glassiness steering over the one good eye. Swinging aside him, Comet went back to the carbon knife. To work with the carbon knife, blood mist sprayed in the air so thick. It was as if a demented reindeer butcher had a scent of the boy. Glory red cloud that two of the security girls weren't could sit by in helpfulness for all they lunged from their awkward floor positions and bid to go get Comet Rudolph shot them both. Then he prevented almost lazy and shot Karen right through the gaping walloping mouth. A stream as strange the song died away, a hideous blood curling choke as bullets rode her brain. Bake of a skull. Other, others, either attempting to get to their friends or the hell away, froze where they did, where they were. A circle of fancy dressed floor, all round and contained, was now an abattoir to rain of appalling, sprawling blood and escalating body count. Escalating body count. Jonah wasn't hadn't been reasonable anymore. Nor even a per, not even a person. He looked like a multitude side of beast. An untrust of hacked off segments being flung from a deep field pavement to the brandishing calm comet. Over, over there, something, somewhere, Merrin heard the sounds of clock choking and wrenching as some of the weak, some of the overpowering ability was standing in sickening spectacles. She wasn't surprised, she doubted if any of these folks in here had ever witnessed to anything remotely as gruesome as this. Turning the summits inside out, or even as fairly reasonable response, she she then she had been focusing on something else though. In a melee, Pash had managed to slide outside the circle of reindeer, out beyond them. They use over the club patrons see better keep vigilant eyes on them, rather than the ring of butchery. So they didn't use the pressy dress boss create a little separation between him and the Christmas surprises. Anything, apparently even Panta, was caught up in the glory. Brevity and the knowledge that the man he held in accountability for this whole scene, Denison, a fragrant mockery to Christmas Tetherians, was no longer contained within the circle. Instead, he was already signaling out another target. Kathy unsurprisingly how about you, you reverend cunt? I'm not so dense he didn't cast the lattress in, in, in surrendos of your teacher here. Whether the concept mistletoe itself is offensive enough, considering it stands for juries and silly notions of magical powers, rather than general Christian beliefs, all that aside, how can you tell me roughly about the word mistletoe means? Who means? 
Kathy was clearly not prepared to curb her study ways, even for her friends, dead around her. Bet your sack is swollen, Santa. Instead of taking your pet out of aggression, killing people, why don't you use it as empty as sack? Come on, how about give me your white hat at Christmas? Give me your, uh, give me that, uh, uh, stuffing, like a stuffing. If Marie had, had, would see Santa's face beneath the mass of white whiskers, masking most of it. She had a fair day ideas that his expression wouldn't, wouldn't be contented lust. After all, quite odd both of us, the guy was a frequent, frequent judicious nut, a showbox extremist, and would embark on fancy dress in the world's possible way. A sound or disgust escaped a red head back job, and rather than respond, he, he dropped his attention back to his sack. Unfortunately for Kathy, not the sack she was making lurid references to for the bag Santa tamed yet another item something that looked like a long section of twig wrench but a medium tree but Mary already knew it was mistletoe and said it was particularly branch came from a banishment barbed wire was twisted along its breath length This is the accursed weed, Santa said, the name of which actually Lucia traits as to shit on a stick. And for you, dim, lusty slut, you just shit out of luck. He moved with a speed which belied his size, and doubtly have a Christian he's wearing. A whip that bore night wild wire mesotone around Kathy's folk. The cruel grat was yanked back and with ferocity that bulged the hapless girl's eyes from her head. Her face went pale to dark crimson from an appalling, alarming purple side to the blink of an eye. The rosettes of blood emerged on her throat as the barbs dug with their steel points into the flesh, deep into the flesh. Folks must have learned that their lessons about rushing into a try and save the selected victim. Nobody moved to do so. Again, Mary thought, the lot of them, any real desire to undo this terror, a mass circulating rush from patrons and staff alike, would have thrown for a sand in the radio squad. Eventually, though, nobody wanted to be a hero, especially sadly a dead one. The lights went out, everything was bathed in total darkness. Mary was hoping that precious madness plan was crawling away with immediate vicinity. They instead, Included Mary was hoping that Patsy's master and calling away was immediate physicity behind including something like digging an elephant gun out of fucking bazooka out of his office. But eventually his first port call was the mastery power switch. Still, that was enough to buy him some time. Hope you make it to the office and locate any of Mary's imagined weapons. Mary it wasn't long, wasn't going to fuck around here either. She had a designs of her own on two locations, a route to the same or the other. She moved, ignoring the painful process of her mind. She grabbed her handfuls of nearest fancy dresses on the floor with her, urging them to move their asses too. Panic erupted the sudden onslaught of dark, not from the halls of captives, but the captives alike. An intrusion of gunshots rang out, the sound deafening amidst the afraid of screams. The sound of cold eight joined an already ranked, perverting order of blood and set hanging over the air in the air. Moti tracks, the common, the commotion of rushing treatment and Designs on two locations on route to the other. She moved, ignoring the painful protests of her spine. She grabbed a handful of the nearest fancy dresses to the floor of her, urging them to move their asses too. Panic erupted in a sudden onslaught of dark, but not for the halls of captives, but the captives alike. And treasure gunshots rang out, sound deafening amidst a furry stream screams. A smell of cold right joined her already bank involving odours of blood and shit hanging over every near. Meaty chunks 
a commotion of rushing movement and a array of other sounds very evidently collided one another as prisoners and prisoners took action alike. But Mary ignored them all. With single handed purpose she hit the first destination, having her eye on it prior to it. Patch cutting out the lights. In a confusion bred by the abrupt spell of dark, she had been suddenly attaining what she sought. Bodies were hidden for behind her. She had no day who or from which side the crashing sounds of furniture behind her turned came fears out came in a compliment glass dining plates and boss Bottles shattering, more gunfire, screams of terror, disorder, rage, and pain. Mary falls on. She had no idea, but somebody those she urged to make their move, more following, blundering, after in the dark. She knew the light would, would, wouldn't be any good. A psycho motherfuckers had done some mean. Me uh, would find some means of hallucination to, to. So would, to would. Perish as desperate to see what was coming. Fear of what had happened in the dark seemed to have more overflowing than actually seeing what happened. But do not so for for Mary. She preferred the preferred the dark. She read his act at sedation. The dog got bumped right now. The announcement now that it, was, it wasn't a pitch of black, it had been in the immediate aftermath of patches, switching off the mains. It was a of lights independent of the mains. Here, behind the barber, Mary had made a dash. She not only did she make, did have a reasonable, solid, temporary hiding place, she also had a moment of visibility. She could see who the those companions who had chosen to follow her behind from the uh, slaughtered scenery of the fancy dress. Marie, Jessam and Jeff, Jeff from the kitchen. Well, as they all hunched together, ducked down the fuck down low, below the level of the bar, the sudden spill of lights were shattered, erratically shadows across faces, almost a splash of blood with, with the butchery in their midst. What do we do, Maria? Moaned a voice, hoarse, a ragged with screaming, call the police. Nope, no police, Mary voted. Peter that. As all the hundred hunched together, ducked away the fuck down low light below the level of bars, some spill lights with sh- shattered erratic shadows across faces, already splash of blood was butchered in this mist. What do we do, my 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 honor? Maria moaned, her voice hoarse and ragged with screaming. Call the police? No, no police, Mary voted for that. Just like the sunny son of beef shed, Patcher had his place soundproofed. Shut all the doors and keep everything locked down. Like I'm sure you have. There's nothing to add audio from the outside. Nobody could even verify gunshots or whatever. Also, by the time police got there, remember, it's fucking Christmas Eve. Not out there. Drunks and all kinds of shit getting them preoccupied. They're occupied. We all we're always dead as Christmas turkeys. These motherfuckers weren't demanding ransoms. This is not a Hitler situation. You know you know who the bar these bastards are, a chorus of negatives issued quietly. Who Jackson's response was a mere shake of her head as she screamed out all the words she could muster up no more. Remember around two weeks ago, those fanatical, brilliant and holier, the now motherfuckers started picketing and marching around outside, trying to say to each other, people, this is the very devil's house, that all kind of shit, remember that. Oh, shit, yes, Jeff said, a realisation dawning in his eyes. Cots could drag them away, shit, I bet you're right. I know I'm right, that's why I put thought that's the fakes that, Thought that say fake, fake fat ass Santa Claus was familiar, because he is. That's back to finish to what he started. It is time for real, it's dream real. Apparently, there's only one way to cure it, as devilish dolls. 
or a slutty, smutty ways, making a dollar on Christmas Eve is deadly sin. I'm guessing when it's done the way we are, we, we're done in here. What do we do, Maria wailed? They're going to kill us all. Not if we kill them first. What are you saying? Short answer, Mary said. Yes, I am, God, and I am. What? Well, there's the scoop, folks. Want to know what I'm applied for this job? Why is such a big gap with my period's employment? It was because I'm enjoying an enforced holiday at Empathy Institution for the Criminal Insane, a long one. Perhaps didn't seem to care too much about any sort of discourse for the application. Shit, I care that I guess having a n- nice set of tits and a great arse are pretty much the requirement elements of snag this job. So, whoop. Guess the little old insane thing must have slipped my mind. But yeah, in short, damn straight, I'm insane. Those sick mother son, son of, of bitches are all kinds of fucked up, but they don't know me at all. I'm a whole new level of fucked up. I really looked like she slugged, slugged out with a wrecking ball. Jessica just looked as though she accepted everything was possible at this stage. Jeff looked confused. If he's expecting a punchline to follow. You seem pretty rational to me, he said. Don't let me fool you. In the rush to escape, immediate visitor, under cover, sudden dark, none of them taking any notice of what worry I brought along with her. None but now with, with a series of small lights beaming, varying degrees of eff- effigence on them, they could see what she grasped, held between her feet. Maria looked like she stuck to the wrecking ball. Jessica just looked like she could accept that anything was possible. This stage, Jeff looked confused as he was expecting a punchline for a while. You don't seem pretty, you seem pretty rational to me, he said. Don't be that right fool you. In a rush to escape the immediate vicinity under cover of sudden dark, none of them had taken any notice that Marie had brought along with her. Now with a series of small lights beaming, varying degrees of efficiency on them all. They could see what she grasped, held between her first feet, St. Nick's chest. That's that. Jesus Christ, is that? Bet your ass, Santa's sack. Looks like he wasn't keeping it tight enough. Hold on. When the lights went out, one of the multiple rows of liquor, but coming back to the back of the bar, the doors were mere glass, but were comprised of refractive mirrors. As Mary cast her eyes that way, she acknowledged that she could see part of what was occurring on the other side. She made her first move. Cognac and brandy had been popular in this evening, so Bass have had plenty of them, both in close property. Proximity. Mary, taking plenty of orders of those, alcohol knew where to locate them both. So she did, without having raised her head above the bottle. Our capping the 200 bowl, though a bill of Remy Martin, she took the healthy shrug of it and she very gasped. You're going to get hammered at a time like this? You are crazy. Told you so. Marie grinned with expression, told her companions she wasn't yanking anything cranky about being unbalanced. Besides, all shit. Well, shit, it's Christmas, isn't it? But, anyways, a couple of seconds later, in conjunction with a bar cloth and a cigarette lighter, she showed them all the real reason behind grabbing the fiery alcohol. Oh, shit, Jeff's eyes widened. The mirror cabinets. Didn't allow Mary to see too much, but she caught enough to realise the road was pretty. I hadn't stumbled around blindly in the dark after the first panic outburst from gunshots. Some of them had obviously been armed with flashlights as well as any armoury they bought. A couple of antlered fools re- reflected the mirror, still the general vicinity of the death zone. Maria st- stood with ha- up with haste and held a brandy bottle put up to a the girl. They had it right among their feet, exploding out on the hard floor. With the floor, a rush of flames engulfed the pants. Legs of the reindeer costumes had spread upwards as a remarkable place. Whenever cheap material the outfits were prized of, was held as was flammable. Now it was time for the reindeer boots to scream as they came flaming, stirring torches. Ignore bitches, Mary declared. Holy fuck, Jeff slumped down to the floor again, eyes wider than ever. Neither of the girls had risen when Mary had both witnessed 
a fire results blazing in an inferno in the reflection of the the camera, grinning with lun- that, that lunatic grin. Her eyes ablaze with an unerving mal- malice. Mary, Mary turned her attention to Santa Sack. She opened it and looked inside. She let herself sit back down to deep, familiar, comfortable darkness. Not at all the gunfire erupting after Fancy Dress was plunged in darkness came from the weapons of the hands of the Utah assailants. As Paul she made his selfie exit from the bloody circle, he had in mind on his point two Smith for Western revolver, so his jacket, as well as the immediate plan to blanket. Fancy that dress in darkness, some of the security also carried, but it was a fair bet that those like Michael and Fearis tried to put butchered beef uh, rather than carved turkey that was Jonah have been frisked and relieved of their theirs when they were ambushed and beat down outside the venue. Why Santa hadn't made a point of frisking everybody else in the joint was well, beyond Pat, but he was fucking glad he hadn't. He kept his eyes on the target the whole time he called. And then Dilly would have plugged that beard, red suit motherfucker, but the King Jesus King was well surrounded by his disciples, and then the push his own men. People would have been in line for fire. Shooting inside his own club, especially in the pitch black, he was about to drench the joint. It wasn't the ideal situation, but it is the point of time. Anything was worth a shot. Calling the cops was out. There was not time to sit around with their thumbs jammed up their asses, waiting for a squad, right squad rescue. And Pash knew that these guys meant to slaughter them all. Probably you had something special reserved for him. After all, he's the ultimate smart peddler. He's a goddamn Lutheran, the fucking Antichrist, as far as these were loose units were concerned. Waiting for them to butcher any more of these people, then set their eye sights on him, wasn't exactly precious a good idea of good time. So he killed the mains and fired his rover, right in the place he seemed keeping his eyes on. Right into the bulk of the nearest reindeer, naturally Panadonium had been sued. Total dog wouldn't remain long. Pash knew that. But at least he was hopeful uh, by enough time for people to get mobile, make a move, make take some action. If it meant hiding, retaliating, trying to bust out and escape, anything was beyond the point. But he'd play cautious, hoping by by following instructions they might avoid more death. It wasn't that they, what the guard and crickets came to do. Everyone was going to die, and playing this sick rules wasn't that wouldn't change the damn thing. The total dark didn't remain for long. Torches, bed lights, mobile phones with flashlights, battery operated lamps in a venue. All kinds of illumination soon happened. Happening. The contrast of dark patches of shadow, crisscross beams of light in varying degrees made that more like a heavy scene and a total light more frightening. More light spilled into the chaos. Somebody held a motor from behind the bar and turned free the Santa's helpers at the rainbow from bay. The cavorting orange flames lent them more, some lent more the infernal aspect of table X. Dan, Fetch Fisket, using an overturned table as a shield. He'd been waiting for another opportunity to shoot one or more of the Santa's soldier goons. As better yet, Santa himself, indeed, he found himself watching from bizarre fascinations and more events followed the reindeer barbecue. A figure launched themselves right up. And into the bar, then down the midst of Angel crew, still. They are stunned by the burning companions. Santa Claus, you fucking do. You of all people should know better than the fuck with a mental health. Shot, Patrick realised it was a next newest girl, the stunning brunette who come dressed as a sexy elf. She came on a path among the reindeer, swing a candy cane. Rodolph, with your nose so bright, she tutted, why do you fucking die tonight? I suppose watching incredibly too stunned to even open fire. And after the crazy cover gale cover, he saw the brightly striped item in her hand was little more than it, more than it appeared. She she stripped the three quarters of red and white coating away to reveal the extremely reveal the extremely incredulous item was a cane sword. She capered among the stupefied reindeer, an insane elf of wicked blade. Then she chopped the blade against the side of Rufus' neck, in which by and force it sneered into flesh, bright to blown. It was a blow that was delivered by a larger, stronger individual. 
It was quite possible the red nosed freak would have been decapitated which was completely. As for was the blow still garnered, shocking fatal results. A wash of blood jet forth, and Marie used a gory shower. Quite is a nice diversity tactic to get close enough to another reindeer disciple. She shrewed him like a kebab, trimmed in the point of the weapon to Kabbalah's reindeer guts, an upward forty five degrees angle. He printed it out his back, adjacent to his spine, and sucked back as he let him drop to his knees, bubbling blood from his gaping mouth. Instead of in- immediately ducking for cover, she continued to dance around the fallen bodies, a sexy, psychotic elf. While well, most of these still breathing, or much too deep in shock to move, had taken advantage of his light skill, and made f- for what slimly, safely they could. This raven haven, this raven haven, an infant, audaciously remained right out in the open, possibly completely forgetting the sense of the gun. Patch wanted to scream and hide to get down, or something he was hopeless to catch up with her. She trailed around and droplets of blood flew off the end of her cane gleaming, trembling ruby in a cast low by the burning reindeer body she realised she was tracking Santa's shapes in the air with blade, stars spells, snowflakes he was so that the other two fancy dressed women were trailing in the wake, Marie and Jess were both of them looking both scared death but totally in regular weaponry as well Maria clutched a Christmas star a pressure could see no ordinary decoration aside from one head safe handle holdings, uh, hold onto it the rest of the item was composed entirely of blades. As for Jacobska, she had a reef in her hands, one which had more nails, segments of jagged wire, and sharp pieces of steel hanging off of it than it did any old mess of material. Price on a pony, Lopes wondered. What the hell did they get? Where did it? Where the hell did they get all that? The query was answered when the fourth individual stole out from behind the bar. Jeff had from the kitchen, holding on to Santa's sack. He searched for it. It withdrew what Patch guessed was snow globes. Nor were only snow globes, hurling them at the dwindling reindeer disciples. Proceeded showers of bursted glass and flying nails, a dangerous dip of sliced flesh, splattering a furtive red hue from the air. It was evident few, if any of the reindeer possessed firearms, they retreated at a creepy craze of elf. Slashing new toy patterns in the air like a bloody sword blade graced them, traced them, eyes twinkling with gleam, a precious little to do the holiday season. What nice did they, did they weld, paled into significance, with some blade of candy cane. Not only just taking into considering the fearsome items held by the ever slightly intrepid companions, garnered from sending it to his own sack. Is all they needed for the mind of fancy dress funders and so on. I finally wake up and conclude sitting around waiting to die wasn't the smartest route to take. They rushed those few faintly still visible, a paltry number for them now combined with the mass rage of vanity that had swamped them. Passion would he witnessed some truly ugly, ugly, truly fucking ugly, brutal things tonight. But he saw now his eventual tide of pissed off punters, wrecked women, and savage sh- security staff descended on Santa, scorched in their brain with grisly, gruesome intensity. It was of no use of creative Christmas women who fashioned by statistic Santa, like Marie and Co. exhibited instead. They grabbed everything within the fancy dress walls they could lay their hands and turned into infants of budgeting. Passion already see damaging bill, smashing. Rocking, skyrocketing to a new Christmas. There were dinner plates, bottles, pieces of furniture, just about anything that could be welded, just in, to making a bloody bulk, bulk reindeer strew right there on the floor. Santa himself, though, was a ghost. No sign of rest, clad son of a bitch. Gonna not, he vanished like a wolf. Somewhere where the dark shadows still pulled, until memory presiding over carriage. She guessed it with a gleeful and injured expression, a candy cane sword caught a flesh of red. Upstairs, up on the com- accommodation, deep broke level, poop level. As the sand blend these dresses decked the halls of pieces of reindeer, Mary, the, the, the living elf, made a beeline for the stairs. Jeff, 
Hosting sank as tanks of lethal toys and playthings followed, as the rest of the surviving dress, fancy dress scales took uh, the other flight says, marching up like vengeful army erotic Christmas century models. Sure enough, Push sort of Santa no longer had his gun. He must have lost it in the commotion, deliberate blackout, just as he lost his sack, about without it being stolen by a brazen elf and puff. He had already nowhere to go. A just girl me led the crowd of women up. Santa, having seen what the crowd had done to his reindeer acolytes, turned about face, perhaps fancying his chances more against the duo advancing from the DJ booth. <coughs> <coughs> Pash switched the lights back on. It was possibly an ill fated move, given how horrific the whole place looked. Under minimal sporadic lights, but he needed everything regardless of how progressive it was going to be. Mary tossed her cane on the floor, a boy to his rain smile, adjoining his uh, verge edge. Santa laughed scornfully, disbelieving he charged her. Trim to the tree, Jeff, Mary said. Oh, cue, Jeff whipped another item for the appropriate Santa's sack and passed it to her. Christmas lights featuring not but goody colourful bubbles and sparkly bells but lengths of wire, razor wire running in congestion with the leaves too late to halt his and primitive dash and Mary Santa blundered right into it like a humming ball of insane energy Mary wrapped the lights around and around his body slicing them with the razor blade pulling his limbs to him in a in a hesitant wild festive bid Mary arrived just in time to place the star she jammed the bloody Lady Star in from his own sack in Santa's stocking cap. Well, let's see what this debacle on the tree looks like. Ugliest gun down tree I've seen, but maybe the light still make it shine, make it shine. Jeff plugged his sensor lead and pulled of his DJ booth, ignoring the tinsel spangled body of the DJ himself, and switched it on. The rain ray of colouring colours glistened in the Brilliant display, flashing and flickering. So did the sparks of electricity that lit broken leaves came into contact with the razor, razor wire. A roaches cheer erupted from the halls below as the smoke started to curl around the stumbling, squalling Santa Claus. The lights blinkered and sputtered. More sparks flew. A pungent building, burning aroma joined the bicot of death already, assailing the entire venue. Then the, the ugly gun down Santa trees crashed right through the railing and pumped it down. Fancy dress had their own Christmas tree set up in the dead centre of the room, just in the occasion. A towering model of almost comprised of metal and plastic, Santa's smoking Christmas light bound body smashed right into it, tumbled through a handful of limbs, and came impaled in a metal stabilizing rod. Even more smoke started to bellow. A f- f- a surge of dangerous sparks shot from like firecrackers, and the cheering crowd continued to bay their approval. Grinning insanely, Mary le- leaned over the and and dummy section of the railing. That's what I call a merry fucking Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>